So normally when I do these episodes, I at least have someone to cheers with. But tonight's episode, number 10, we're celebrating just you and I. Drinking beer and talking about gear. Cheers. So tonight's beer of choice for this particular episode is my go-to beer or brewery, and it's going to be Solace. And this is their, uh, what is it, IPA 7.5%, and I really do enjoy this. So tonight I will be treating myself to a little Solace. Now, typically in these episodes, having a guest, which is my absolute favorite, it gives me an opportunity to dabble with a little bit of gear, ask the guest what they use, what they don't use, what they like, they don't like, and giving me a little back and forth. We get to kind of venture and go down some wormholes of things they like, don't like, and ex- experiences that they've had. But a lot of times we eventually end up veering away from gear. So for tonight's 10th episode, I thought I would have a one-on-one conversation with you or with you guys in regards to I want to hone in or spend time on items that honestly are weird or maybe little things that you might not be thinking about but I find myself using all the time and so you might be thinking to yourself well what exactly are you even referring to so item number one for gear and beer this evening is going to be And this is a little bit, all these links to the products will be in the description below. But this is uh, some screws, bolts, whatever you name it. Uh, Pretty much a all-in-one package that I bought about a year or two ago. I don't know the exact uh, actual threads and sizes, but you get a variety pack of all different bolts, things, adapters that are going to be used to go into all kind of little mic inputs here it's going to be able to adapt here even for my microphone to work on this particular tripod setup or this mic stand setup Um, even with a couple of my clamps here we'll go ahead and show you guys these kind of screws come in here that are going to go into all different kind of uh, I guess items that you're going to find yourself using as you venture into video production and things like that so Item number one are useful items that I find myself constantly, constantly using, especially for something like a camera cage. That's one thing with all these screws. I am going to be able to adapt to pretty much any kind of hole that has been given here. So this little package, like I said, link in description. One little thing that I've just found over the years, (laughs) you need to get your nuts and bolts straight because that can honestly come in handy more often than you would ever think. And another thing that I find myself using a lot are going to be clamps. Now, you can pick these up at Home Depot. You can get them off of Amazon. I wanted to say I paid maybe $10 for a pack of 12 of these. And I've got them all lined up here. I've got clamps on my ceiling. I've got them stuffed into my bags. I've got them in my travel kit. You name it. Because really what I find is there's just so many scenarios where... You just need to clamp something to something. And whether it be a sheet to a wall, a sheet to maybe even a pole, or you need an LED gel, who names, or whatever it may be, really a clamp is just going to put you in a situation where, I don't know, I always carry them with me. So clamps, one of those awkward items that I definitely recommend that you guys uh, take with you on the fly. And like I said, these are just things that... I just, maybe in my beginning days, I would have never thought to just have or I wouldn't have seen the value, whereas now it's just kind of a necessity. So clamps, bolts, and then that literally kind of moves me into something else that I think we kind of tend to forget, and that's going to be batteries. Now, of course, if you are on a big shoot or if I'm on a big shoot, I tend to want to have definite new fresh batteries. But if I'm at shooting for YouTube, doing something like this for my Zoombox recorder, you name it, you know, rechargeable batteries are really going to come in handy and they're going to save me a ton of money. And I have Jesse Anderson currently calling me, so I will pause or put him on the podcast. He's actually been on here, Mr. Quacklope. I literally have you on my podcast. What's going on? Uh, you have me on the podcast? Yeah, I'm recording right now. What's going on? Oh, I got you. I got you. 
Gotcha. Well, I was just calling to see, I was calling to see what you had, uh, what you had in mind for me, and to see if you were, you were interested in producing a uh, April Fool's like video for the main channel. Um, I'm driving back from Kentucky at the moment with a load full of stuff. Uh, let me think about it. Is it to be game centric? Is that the whole point? Oh, and I'm also, I'm also shooting that wedding for your, for your friends as well. Oh, fantastic. Um, okay, so an April Fool's video, is it more for... We have, we have, a, we have a fully produced a master sitcom song. Okay. And we're going we're gonna to make the claim that we're going to we're stopping all board game content, and we're going to just do a lifestyle sitcom series. Okay. The for us is to use your uh, masterful videography and editing skills to do sure. it as if it was a professional product. Because I could not produce it on my own. Um, so I wanted, to, I wanted to pick your brain about that. One of the most talented videographers that I'm aware of. Wow, you're uh, making me sound really... That I'm aware of. Yeah, you're making well, me sound I'm really good. Yeah, I know, but I'm on the podcast, so I figured I'd, you know, I'd give you a reason to leave this part in. Yeah, that is good. I do appreciate that. Um, Yes, let me call you when I'm done with this, but yes, yes, and yes, and... Gosh, how we have to have it done, though, really soon is the problem. We gotta film it yeah, in the next few days. Thing. We got, we have to, we, I literally need to hire you for a day of filming and probably post production for a day or so. We can send you the music. Uh, we can send you the music. Jen, I'm literally talking about the sitcom right okay. now, buddy. Yes. Oh yes. my gosh. All right. Well, uh, let me. Jen, Jen also thinks it has to be you. By the way, that contract for Monday looks like it's gonna solidify well. Contract for Monday. Contract for Monday. You're finishing up that edit of that uh, contract you for. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, psh, yeah. I just, I sent him an edit um, today. I don't know if you watched it, but unless they, the only thing I could imagine is if they, did, they didn't like the music, but bro, it's like in your face intense. So I think they're going to love it is my answer. Uh, um, I thought, my, my thought is I could probably toss you a little bit of extra cash for that if you're able to do the sitcom thing as well. So if you get you paid without it coming out of my direct pocket either. Ooh, so, killing two birds with one stone. All right, uh, let me one. No, I'm actually it's my tenth episode, so I'm just doing it solo. Actually, talking about gear. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, let's do this, dude. Uh, yes, and I'm gonna probably have to do it either Tuesday or Wednesday, and I might have to. Yeah, because I'm booked on Thursday, and then my parents, I think, get here. I don't know. I'll be in contact with you probably tomorrow morning. But yes, let's make it happen. Send me the audio. Send me the audio so I can get my head around it and start thinking. All right, this is going to be fun. See you, podcast. All right, later, buddy. Thanks, man. Peace. All right, so Mr. Anderson, that's some work. Never can complain about that. And, uh, wow, where do I go from here? All right, well, landed some work. Going to be having a April Fool's little video that's going to be fun to do. But, but, back to gear, back to beer. All right, so we talked about some clamps, and we talked about bolts, and you know what? We talked about batteries and rechargeable batteries being super important, and I've had these Energizer batteries for years now, and I just will promise you, look, invest in something like this, save the money, save the time, but when you're on those big shoots, that's maybe when you get on Amazon.com and you go ahead and buy yourself or treat yourself to some nice batteries. But that moves me into the next little kind of item that I think most of you probably have, but I think sometimes we're not taking it serious enough, and that's audio. Now, obviously, you can literally break the bank when it comes to audio. Um, I personally, if you're familiar with this channel, I am always looking for what I would consider a... I don't want to break the bank, but I do want to get what I would consider prosumer level audio so when i when i mention prosumer i'm just saying i want it to be better than the vast majority of videos that you're going to land on but i don't really care if it's going to be like tv and really that's just because i've come to find that one day i will get there but right now i am finding success kind of just a few steps below that like super high notch level kind of thriving there in the minor leagues and I'm not really even ashamed of it. If anything, it's really fun and it puts you in an environment where I get to experiment and kind of just keep learning and getting better and better. So when it comes to audio, one thing that I think a lot of you guys could, should consider 
You probably have your iPhone. You've got headphones, and I think that definitely is a great source. But I run and gun shoot with my Panasonic GH5, with my iPhone, with a lot of things, with this Movo VXR10 Pro mic. And yes, they have sent it to me, but time and time again for $50, this microphone really does come in handy. And I've mentioned to you guys, you could also take its little wind muff and the dead cat, throw it on there. And then in some of my videos, I have used it where it's basically my microphone. Now I will say one little disclaimer, you're going to need to get some distance and you're going to need to check your levels on your camera because with these microphones, a lot of times they run a little hot. And if you're wondering what that means, it just really means that because it's, uh, it's not battery powered or anything, and it's more of for people that are just going to plug and go. It seems to kind of have higher levels in regards to how hot the audio is. <laughs> and I keep saying hot, but it's just how loud the audio is that it's recording. And it has a lot of background noise if you're recording in higher levels. So if you want to get phenomenal audio out of a mic like this, just lower your levels. And then in post-production, bring them up a little bit. And that's where I find these roughly anywhere from like $150 and below. Now this mic being $50. Um, you can get some really phenomenal audio. So audio is going to be key. And it's one of those things that Every video, you're going to need some audio. And this basically stays in my bag all the time, really just in the rare scenario where if I forgot my lavalier mic or I did need a, you know, a really good audio source that could be just out of camera or I just want to go ahead and admit it and have it in camera, always a great option to have. So audio source, Movo VXR10 Pro, um, trust me, there are plenty of other models out there that are great. I'm a little biased. I like Movo. They've been good to me and I've you know, I keep using it time and time again. And for most of my shoots, this is what I guess I would consider kind of like my backup audio, uh, which then a lot of times actually turns into my main audio because I need maybe some breathing or I need like a direct audio uh, track or something from a piece that I maybe shot and boom, then I have my Movo audio. So we've discussed bolts, we've discussed clamps, we've discussed batteries and audio and then lighting, baby. Lighting, lighting, lighting. And uh, I've got two lighting options here. Um, a lot of you are probably familiar with Aperture Lighting. I forget the model that this is, but this is a roughly $100 RGB LED light pocket. And man, what a great investment to take with you to get you out of any pickles. Um, also, it's got magnets on the back of it so it can be clamped to a lot of different things. I've actually put some Velcro on there, which is why it doesn't clamp as well. But uh, these magnets are actually pretty solid. But this is one of those things can go in your pocket, can go in your bag. And then I also have an even smaller version from Falcon Eyes. And this one I think is like 70 bucks. It's plastic. Um, definitely a solid build. The aperture feels a little bit more uh, solidly built, but um, the Falcon Eyes coming in at 70 bucks. RGB, oh, I don't actually think I have you powered up, do I? Uh oh. But magnets on the back, boom, it'll go right there. These two lights also can go and get hooked up through Bluetooth. So, what am I trying to say? These are extremely, holy cow, that probably peaked the auto. Uh, valuable uh, tools, items to have in your bag, and both of them under $100. I think $100 and I think $70, and uh, the battery life is great. Colors are great, and uh, yeah, overall, if you've got some extra cash and you need something that's going to get you out of a pickle, these are great, and then they also have their little mounting, so you can go ahead and hot shoe mount them on your camera or anywhere that you would like. So lighting, those two definitely come in handy. In regards to pieces of gear that I'm constantly using, like I keep stating here, these are items that they're not the shiniest, bright, brightest items, you know. Do I do reviews about them? Yes. But do they get the most views? No, but it's surprising because these items that I'm discussing, I use a ton. Now this particular clamp, I know we mentioned clamps earlier. This is a small rig clamp. Like I said, description will be in the link below. These are great for hanging lights, doing all kinds of stuff. It doesn't matter if you needed to mount this here or if you needed to mount this on a desk. Boom, it's quick, it's easy. And I wanna say these are roughly like 12 or 13 bucks. Link in the description below. Now, another item that totally comes in handy. This one's gonna be more expensive. 
an action cam. Now, I have my GoPro Hero 4, which I've been using recently mainly because of the battery life, but I also use an Unreal 4K, which is like roughly $150 um, action camera. I also even have my GoPro Hero 5. It actually just crapped out on me recently, and I actually think that has to do with its little like card reader slot finally just kapooied. But yeah. Action cams, I cannot tell you how often for BTS, for just capturing random things where I, I can't pull focus, you know, or I just need a big wide shot. Action cams come so in handy. And if you don't have the luxury of one of these, well, then go ahead and start using your phone. And then that leads me to the next device that really is just a must. And my goodness, I probably use it more than I ever would have thought. Is a little bitty, bitty like tripod setup like this. Now this one is actually from my Zion crane, but you're going to be able to go out and find little tripods similar to this. The ball head, this might be the most important thing outside of, yes, you wanted this to be sturdy. And the reason I went with the Zion is because it has this like real, little rubber coating, which is just super nice on the hand in regards to holding. So that's why I chose this. Also, I like how low it gets. It gets real stable there. And then I actually took the ball head from an old Joby Gorilla Pod. Man, they just killed it with their uh, ball heads. I just really think in regards to how well it locks and how smooth it is, I've just been always impressed with the Joby uh, ball heads. And then also, I like the quick release plate, or whatever you want to call it. Now, I will say in regards to audio, the only kind of knock I have in regards to this setup is just I get a little bit of shake here because of this device and how it clamps in there, it eventually over time is going to get a little loose. And so like with my GoPros and stuff, I sometimes would find I'd pick up a little shake in regards to the audio. But if I'm not using that as my audio source, just syncing it up, you're gonna be fine. So action cam plus a nice little handheld tripod, you know, that's something that believe it or not, is just totally gonna come in handy. And with this setup too, I could also quickly throw like my uh, iPhone or smartphone mount on there and boom. Also, it is sturdy enough to, um, I want to say the biggest camera I've probably put on there is my Canon 5D Mark III with the 7200. Now granted, it needed to be level. I wasn't going to tilt it forward because it would probably fall forward. GH5 totally rocks and rolls on that setup. But yeah, get yourself a nice tripod, a little handheld. Uh, don't go cheap in this. Find something you like, something that's a little bit more bulky it'll actually save you a lot of time. Uh, getting something that sits up a little bit higher and stuff, what I found is the cameras would just be a little bit heavy, top heavy, and just fall over. Okay, as we move into another item that I've used constantly, power bank. Yes, this Jackery or Jockery, yeah, Jackery. Uh, I've got a USB import, also got a USB-C, whatever, I forget, oh gosh, whatever this one is, or micro USB. I'm probably completely butchering it. But reason being that these come in handy, obviously for your smartphone, uh, but really most cameras nowadays can be actually charged from the side, whether it be through USB, USB 3, or USB-C, or even lightning cables. But I find that these really come in handy. And also, even when it comes to just charging up maybe even a light on the fly, boom. I even find in a lot of situations, if I'm gonna be filming really long videos, and like, let's say I'm using one of these little lights as like a hair light and I'm just, I'm not going to be able to like keep an eye on it. I will actually kind of jerry rig this into this so that we have full power here. Plus we're giving it power through here. And that pretty much gets me out of any situation where we would, you know, lose some lighting. So these little, you know, chargers, they are just clutch as can be. And yeah, I want to say this is like 59 bucks and I've had it. For years also it has the ability it's got chargers on the side there as well so it's gotten me out of a ton of pickles especially when it came down to some of these lighting situations and things like that now i've got two more items that are really just things that well let me how about this let me let me just get to it now I know not everyone that's going to be watching this video shoots on Micro Four Thirds cameras, but if you know me, I'm a huge fanboy of them. Shoot on the Panasonic GH5, which is what we're currently filming with. And this 14 to 42, don't get me wrong, this thing is as plastic as can be. It's a kit lens. It's the focus is kind of wacky dude all day. But man, I got it for a hundred dollars years ago. And that 14 millimeter is wide enough that for vlogging with a setup like this. 
and then the GH5 on there. I'm not going to lie. It, it's do totally doable, even in situations where I'm using IBIS and I'm having a little bit of a crop in. This lens comes in handy. Autofocus is pretty solid as long as you've updated your GH5. Then again, you guys can also see I've got an ND filter. And this is kind of my go-to like vlog camera in regards to not necessarily something I'm going to shoot all my B-roll with, but my like talk to camera or situations where I might need some autofocus mainly for myself, maybe even some face tracking. This lens has totally come in handy. And at that roughly $100 mark, now I bought it used, if I destroy it, I'm really not going to be upset and it's not going to ruin my day. So I guess note to self, Find yourself a cheap kit lens that's maybe used either for wides or just something the unique. Have a lens in your bag that you're not a, not afraid to destroy because then you can get really unique and do some crazy stuff. And last but not least, this is an item. Now I know I've been talking all evening about items that I use that completely come in handy. This item is one that you guys are going to get more of an in-depth look in here really soon on the channel. Um, the Lyle Wow. 17 millimeter t 1.9 look how tiny this is it's so itty bitty they sent it to me hooked it up first time i've been sent a product from liwell or liowa god i'm probably butchering it you guys drop a comment in the comment section below if i said it right or wrong you'd be the determining factor but a t 1.9 for that micro four thirds 17 millimeter i've done some shooting with this recently did a talking head uh, actually on my old panasonic gh4 this lens is great for getting blurry backgrounds as you guys can see it is super itty bitty i want to say their price point on this is 199 maybe I've gotten it or it's being loaned to me for three weeks. They want my thoughts, comments, you know, concerns. I've taken some photos with it. Like I said, I did a talking head and I'm really just having some fun shooting at that T 1.9, getting some blurrier backgrounds. Uh, I want to say my Mechie is a T 2.2. So, you know, I want to say because this is a little bit of a tighter focal length, that's why I feel like I'm getting some blurrier backgrounds. And with it being a 17 millimeter on that micro four thirds camera, Let's just, we're not going to completely double it, but you could pretty much say that this is roughly like a 30 millimeter, 32 millimeter, I guess you could say. So it's been fun to goof around with, and I'll have a full review and my thoughts in regards to this. But episode 10, number uh, of gear and beer, golly, it's a little bit different when I'm just talking directly to you guys, but we, we had a guest for a quick bit. Landed some gigs, landed some work, talked about some weddings, and gave you guys some insight into gear that I find myself constantly using. Now, I know we all get consumed with gear, which is why I wanted to talk about things that were a little bit cheaper and things that I actually used. Um, you know, it isn't always about your camera. It isn't always about your gear, but it is definitely nice to have the things that you need. So, as always, guys, it's Trey Lowell with Lowell Productions, Gear and Beer, episode number 10. I am cheersing to you for the viewer that's out there watching. You guys have been great. Um, I've really been having fun doing this. I've got a couple more interviews lined up. Definitely trying to hit that 52 this year mark. So, it's going to be all kinds of stuff, all kinds of guests. And, uh, yeah, for episode 10... I want to really focus on gear, say thank you, and uh, keep it a little bit shorter than normal, but say, hey, we've got an episode coming next week, should be great, many more interviews and guests to come of all walks of life and specialties, I might even be interviewing my dad here in the near future, business owner, entrepreneur, pretty cool story, and um, I want to pick his brain on kind of some trials, tribulations, and things give you guys some encouragement, give myself some encouragement, and have a good old-fashioned cold beer with my dad. So, as always, guys, see you in the next episode. Gear and beer. I'm out.